Hey y'all, I'm Jacob. You're watching the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. I just want to talk to you really quick about cheap stainless steel and why it gets a worse reputation than it deserves. Now, uh, I'm primarily talking about fixed blade knives. I've come to learn recently that uh, you know, the, the fixed blade market and, and the folder market, they're completely different markets, completely different people, all kinds of different stuff. We're primarily talking about fixed blades here. And um, a long time ago on this channel, I realized that the cheap stainless wasn't nearly as bad as everybody gave it, uh, made it out to be. When I used a Fox Maceo 2 machete in 12C27, it was just over, I think, an eighth of an inch thick. It held an edge for a long time, and I beat the piss out of it. It was unkillable without trying to kill it. But I mean, I was batoning this long, thin knife through hard wood and doing fire prep and stuff, and it was fine. So um, what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to talk to you about some specs from Dr. Laren Thomas. Uh, you can see these at Knife Steel Nerds. I'm going to put a link in the description box below to the charts that I'm going to pull some of this data from. But um, I'm going to present to you this video from the perspective that the industry standard for a outdoor fixed blade is either 1095 or D2. I'm going to do a whole video about D2. But what I'm going to tell you is that 1095 is probably very overrated, whereas D2 is probably somewhat underrated. Um, and with that being said, any steel properly heat treated, any knife steel properly heat treated, is probably going to be good enough to do whatever it is that you want to do. So we have here a rating scale from 1 to 10. Uh, from Laren Thomas and this guy isn't just a random somebody uh, by the way uh, and so a 1 to 10 scale on toughness edge retention and corrosion resistance now this is oversimplified and this entire video is going to be oversimplified uh, toughness is you know how far a steel can bend before snapping essentially but a very tough steel can massively deform behind the edge and f essentially fail, uh, whereas a less tough steel that has more, um, um, you know, torsional toughness behind the edge, even at the same thickness, more edge stability, might have no damage whatsoever. So this is oversimplified, but it's for a quick YouTube video, or what I hope is going to be a quick YouTube video. So the standard here being 1095 is rated uh, from his testing for a toughness of 4.5 out of 10, edge holding of 1.5 out of 10, and corrosion resistance zero. So that's going to be our standard. Now in comparison to that, D2 gets a toughness of 3.5, a little bit behind, an edge retention of five, pretty good, and a corrosion resistance of 4.5. Pretty good. Um, now, I'm going to say that the secondary standard or the premium standard is S35VN or CPM3V. My own knife brand uses S35VN and I am absolutely happy with it. So 3V gets a toughness of nine, an edge holding of four and a half and a corrosion resistance of five and a half. So at this point, um, you can see it's far superior to D2 with more than double the uh, toughness on the scale, uh, nearly as much edge holding, and superior corrosion resistance. Um, an excellent, a well-balanced fixed blade steel. S35VN gets a toughness of 5, edge retention of 5, corrosion resistance of 7.5. So again, a very well-balanced steel. And these, uh, all of this information is available in the link in the description box below, and there's charts listing all of this, and it makes it really easy. So let's go back and compare S35VN, the steel that I use for my brand, to 1095. 
1095 has a toughness of 4.5. S35VN, according to these tests, has a, a toughness of 5. So your stainless steel on S35VN has a superior toughness. Your edge holding is a 5 as compared to an edge holding of 1.5, and a corrosion resistance of 7.5 as compared to a corrosion resistance of 0. So I, I just have gone through all of this to lay the foundations for what we're going to talk about next. Because when you look at 420HC, a steel that is commonly crapped on, uh, according to his tests, and I've, uh, it's, it's, it's verifiable, guys. 420HC has a toughness of 9, an edge holding of 2.5, and a corrosion resistance of eight. Here's the deal, guys. 12C27, 420HC, steels like this, uh, 440B. 420HC, according to these tests, has double the toughness of 1095, a toughness that is on par with CPM3V. Edge retention that is better than 1095 and corrosion resistance of 8, which is not the best, but is very good. These cheap stainless steels are incredibly tough. They hold an edge well enough, better than the industry standard, and they're very corrosion resistant. And the reason I want to talk about this is uh, I wish... I, I'll never be able to sell a product in 420HC because my production costs are too high. I wouldn't be able to make a profit because I'm a low-volume company making a, a small volume of high-end products. And nobody, many, I'm going to say nobody. If I can't make money off of it, if I can't sell it, then what am I doing? I don't have the money to just throw away. I have to sell my product. S35VN probably has the best balance of knife steels out there. But if I was a giant manufacturing company and I purely was going for performance, why wouldn't I go with 420HC? Imagine every premium knife manufacturing company in America or abroad offering products in 420HC for three quarters of the price of what they offer their products in their super steel in with excellent heat treat. Uh, the entire industry would be a better place. Your Moras, your Victorinox, um, you know, all of these companies, they use these simple stainlesses, and we all love them. They're fantastic. Now, they might not have the best edge holding, uh, and... Uh, Heat treat is important, guys. And Laren Thomas's uh, testing uh, shows a spectrum of toughnesses and edge holdings when he gives it to you. Uh, but um, don't don't write off a company necessarily because of the steel that they use. There's always going to be a market for chasing the newest, coolest steel. Magnica is great. It's fantastic. I would probably pick Magnica over S35VN, and someday I might do that if it becomes, you know, viable. It's really expensive right now. But Magnica's fantastic. CPM, S35VN, and 3V are fantastic. Um, they are worth every dollar. But if price was not a factor and they were all the same price, would they be better for every application than some of these cheap steels? No. And if a, if a company using 1095 made their products in 420HC exactly the same with excellent heat treat, would it be an inferior product? Again, no. <clears throat> And this kind of get kicked off because a little company that I have no experience with, I've never used their products uh, or whatever, called Just In Case Tactical, you know, um, made a post. They make their knives in 420HC with nice flat grinds, and I think that's really cool of them to do. And someone commented 420HC, 
really? Question, question, question. And um, I don't think it's the right mentality to have. I really don't. I think that if we weren't so busy chasing the newest steel on the market, that the market would be better for it. I talked to Hot Creek Armory. They used A2. They said they're not interested in chasing down the latest and greatest steel. They've got their heat treat dialed for A2, and they want to use A2, and it's what works for them. Good. Wander Tactical uses D2. They've got their heat treat down for D2. They do a cryo heat treat. They think that it's, it does exactly what they want it to do. Good. I've been so impressed. Half-breed blades using D2 or Bowler K110. Work tough, Bowler K110, good. The value isn't as much in the steel as it is to the quality control and the heat treat, the grind geometry and the handle geometry. And guys, Cedric and Ada, uh, Pete, Cedric and Ada, subscribe to his channel. I'm not gonna put a link in here, but type in Cedric and Ada if you're a knife guy and subscribe to his channel like right now. Pause this video, go subscribe. Uh, he's showed over and over and over and over again what edge geometry can do for um, edge retention. And a knife in 420HC with ideal edge geometry will outcut any knife in any super steel with crappy edge geometry. And that's even if that super steel is heat treated right because a lot of companies are screwing up heat treat on new super steels when they first come out. So, um, and the other thing about having a toughness way, way up at nine is you can probably run that edge thinner. Your knife can probably handle that thinner edge geometry. And let's talk about ease of sharpening. I love sharpening 1095. I love sharpening 420HC. It's freaking easy. As long as, you know, some knives out there, 420HC, the edge is really thick. You know, sharpening a th super thick edge is never gonna be as much fun, especially if you have to thin it down. But uh, guys, think about this, seriously. Like, I don't know who's watched 12 and a half minutes into this so far, but if you have, don't think that a steel sucks because all the affordable knives are offered in it. And because those knives are affordable, go buy one and find out for yourself. Buy a Mora and see what it does for you. Because it's gonna hold an edge. It's gonna be easy to sharpen. It's gonna be tough. If you break it out of the handle because the way they designed the tang, who cares? Buy another one or get a full tang one. I actually don't like their full tang model, most of their full tang models as much because I don't like the thicker Moras. Uh, I don't like a, a thicker knife with a Scandinavian grind. But uh, anyways, that's all I've got, guys. Uh, you know, get some dirt time. You've got to separate the marketing from the reality. If you enjoyed this video, check out the description box below. Below the link to all of this, these charts and testing will be links to how you can support me and my channel through Patreon, my uh, my knife brand, Exodus Knife and Tool, my rifle sling brand, Beach and Tactical. I'm an affiliate for PSA and Brownells. Uh, I've got social media links, etc. down there. Check it out. Uh, and guys, at the end of the day, you know, if more of us were just getting dirt time, the market couldn't take advantage of us. And I'm not saying that offering super steals is taking advantage of every, anybody, but uh, you, you're, you're missing out on a whole potential market of unique premium uh, production knives in simple stainless steels that are very affordable because people can't sell them. And if people can't sell them, the market will not exist. It's a shame. And the market is doing itself a disservice by doing that. So, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I hope that you have a blessed day.